Friedrich Paulus, a German military officer during World War II, is best known for his role as the commanding general of the German Sixth Army during the Battle of Stalingrad. While Paulus is often criticized for his actions and surrender at Stalingrad, his life and career offer a unique glimpse into the complexities of war and the difficult choices faced by those caught in the clutches of Nazi Germany. This video delves into the life of Friedrich Paulus, highlighting his rise through the ranks, his controversial decisions, and his lasting impact on military history. Friedrich Paulus was born on September 23, 1890, in Breitenau, Germany. He aspired to become an officer cadet in the German Navy but was rejected due to his lack of aristocratic lineage. After a brief period studying law at the University of Marburg, he joined the German army in 1910 and was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the 3rd Baden Infantry Regiment the following year. During the First World War, Paulus served as adjutant of the 3 Battalion. In 1915, he joined the staff of the 2nd Prussian Jaeger Regiment and later the operations staff of the Alpine Corps. He fought on both the Eastern and Western Fronts. Following the war, Paulus continued his military career and became adjutant to the 14th Infantry Regiment at Konstanz. He received general staff training in 1922 and joined Army Group 2 at Kassel in the following year. From 1924 to 1927, he served as a general staff officer with Wehrkreis V in Stuttgart. Although some officers criticized Paulus for being slow and lacking decisiveness, he steadily climbed the ranks and became a tactics instructor with the 5th Infantry Division in 1930. In 1934, Paulus was promoted to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel and appointed commander of Motor Transport Section 3. In September 1935, he succeeded Heinz Guderian as chief of staff to the commander of Germany's mechanized forces. Known for his expertise in motorized warfare, Paulus was promoted to major general and became the director of training for Germany's for light divisions in 1939. Just before the outbreak of the Second World War, Paulus assumed the role of chief of staff of the 10th Army under General Walther von Riekinar. He participated in the invasion of Poland in September 1939 followed by the Western Offensive in Belgium and France. In June 1940, Paulus was promoted to Lieutenant General and later became the Deputy Chief of the General Staff. He conducted a fact-finding tour in North Africa, visiting General Erwin Rummel. Paulus' report on the Deutsches Afrika Korps and Rummel was critical, but Adolf Hitler took no action in response. Paulus then conducted a strategic survey on the Soviet Union for Operation Barbarossa. He advised Hitler to prevent the Red Army from retreating into the interior, and advocated for battles of encirclement to ensure the campaign's success. Paulus also suggested focusing the main thrust north of the Pripyat marshes to capture Moscow. In December 1941, Hitler agreed to field Marshal Walther von Riekinar's recommendation to appoint Paulus as the commander of the Sixth Army. Paulus, now a general, assumed command on January 1, 1942 and engaged in his first battle at Dnipropetrovsk in the Soviet Union. The Sixth Army's advance was halted by the Red Army, and Paulus was forced to order a retreat in search of better defensive positions. On May 9, 1942, the Sixth Army, heavily outnumbered by General Seaman Tymoshenko's forces, began moving back toward Kharkov. However, they were rescued on May 17 when General Paul von Kleist and his 1st Panzer Army struck the exposed southern flank of Tymoshenko's troops. Paulus launched a counterattack on May 20, and by the end of the month, Soviet resistance had ceased. Approximately 240,000 Soviet soldiers were either killed or captured, and Paulus was awarded the Knight's Cross. In the summer of 1942, Paulus led the Sixth Army's advance toward Stalingrad with a formidable force. However, progress was slow due to fuel shortages. By August 18, Paulus had run out of fuel, just 35 miles from Stalingrad. When fresh supplies arrived, he decided to move forward with only his 14 Panzer Corps to conserve fuel. The Red Army launched an attack, halting the advance just short of the city. The remainder of Paulus' forces joined the encirclement, and street fighting ensued. As the German army fought their way into Stalingrad, they faced intense resistance from the Soviets, who defended every building. The urban environment and cleverly camouflaged artillery and machine gun positions posed significant challenges for the German tanks. The Soviets effectively used sniper detachments deployed in the bombed-out buildings. On September 26, the 6th Army raised the swastika flag over the government buildings in Red Square, but the street fighting continued. Hitler ordered Paulus to capture Stalingrad at any cost, despite high casualty rates. 
Paulus replaced General Gustav von Wietersheim with General Hans Hube when the former complained about the casualties. However, with dwindling resources and a shortage of ammunition and food, Paulus requested reinforcements from Hitler on October 4. Several days later, additional troops arrived in Stalingrad, but the war of attrition continued. Joseph Stalin responded by sending three more armies to the city. Although Soviet losses were higher, they had greater numbers than Paulus' forces. Heavy rains in October turned the roads into muddy quagmires, impeding the 6th Army supply lines. By October 19, the rain had turned to snow, exacerbating the situation. Despite controlling 90% of the city by early November, Paulist troops faced ammunition and food shortages. Nevertheless, he ordered a major offensive on November 10, resulting in heavy German casualties over the next two days. The Red Army launched a counterattack, forcing Paulist to retreat southward. When Paulus reached Gumrak airfield, Hitler ordered him to hold his position and await supplies from the Luftwaffe, despite the risk of encirclement. The corps commanders advised a breakout before the Red Army could consolidate its positions, but Paulus felt compelled to follow Hitler's orders. Throughout December, the Luftwaffe conducted an insufficient airlift, dropping an average of 70 tons of supplies per day, well below the 300 tons required by the encircled German army. The soldiers endured severe deprivation, resorting to eating their horses. By December 7, the 6th Army was surviving on one loaf of bread for every five men. Recognizing the 6th Army's dire situation, Hitler ordered Field Marshal Erich von Manstein and the 4th Panzer Army to mount a rescue attempt. Manstein approached within 30 miles of Stalingrad but was halted by the Red Army. On December 27, 1942, he decided to withdraw to avoid being encircled himself. Within Stalingrad, German casualties mounted rapidly, with over 28,000 soldiers dying and another 12,000 wounded in a little over a month. Due to limited food supplies, rations were only given to those who could actively participate in combat. Despite General Erich von Manstein's suggestion of a breakout, Paulus did not attempt one. On January 30, 1943, Hitler promoted Paulus to the rank of field marshal, hoping he would commit suicide. However, Paulus surrendered to the Red Army the following day. The remaining German forces capitulated on February 2. The battle for Stalingrad had come to an end, resulting in the capture of over 91,000 German soldiers, 45,000 evacuations by air, and the deaths of 100,000 during the siege. The German prisoners endured a forced march into captivity, and approximately 45,000 died during the journey to prisoner of war camps. Only around 9,000 German soldiers survived the war. Paulus was taken into custody and initially refused to cooperate with the Soviets. However, after learning about the execution of his friends Eric Hopner and Erwin von Witzelben following the July plot, he agreed to make anti-Nazi broadcasts. In these broadcasts, Paulus called for German general officers to disobey Hitler's orders. In response, Hitler ordered the imprisonment of Paulus' entire family in a concentration camp. In 1946, Paulus appeared as a witness for the prosecution at the Nuremberg trials. While he admitted guilt for the attack on the Soviet Union, he refused to incriminate Alfred Jodl or Wilhelm Keitel. Paulus remained imprisoned in the Soviet Union until his release in 1953. He settled in Dresden, East Germany, where he suffered from cerebral sclerosis and declining health. Friedrich Paulus passed away on February 1, 1957. Conclusion Friedrich Paulus, the commanding general of the German Sixth Army during the Battle of Stalingrad, was a man caught between loyalty to his country and the stark realities of war. While his decision to surrender and subsequent cooperation with Soviet forces brought him condemnation in Nazi Germany, his action saved countless lives. Friedrich Paulus's story serves as a reminder of the difficult choices faced by individuals during times of war, and highlights the complexities of human nature in the face of extreme circumstances. Despite the controversy surrounding his legacy, Paulus's role in the Battle of Stalingrad ensures his place in the annals of military history. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more content like this, please consider subscribing to our channel. By subscribing, you'll be notified when we upload new videos. Thank you again for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in our next video.